Hey everybody, in this video we're probably biting off more than we can chew because we're talking about current events and the current event we're talking about, inflation. Why? Because that's what everybody cares about in June of 2022. And here's the things we're talking about as we talk about inflation. We're going to talk about the NARU, that's right, the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment, also wage price spirals, also fiscal monetary policy and letting the economy run hot. And we're going to be doing it all with a model. And the model we're going to use is the Phillips Curve model. Here's the deal, guys. We are looking at current events through an academic perspective, okay? That's what I'm trying to do in these videos. And let's get to it, okay? So let's start off with that model, that Phillips curve model. Let's just make sure that we understand it, okay? The Phillips curve model is depicting an inverse relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. What does that mean, an inverse relationship? It means when one goes up, the other one goes down, and vice versa, okay? They go in opposite directions. And here's the reason, guys. Unemployment starts coming down, that economy is warming up, people start spending more, inflation ticks up. Because what is inflation? An increase in prices, right? And hey, if unemployment starts to increase, that's the economy going into a recession. People have less money, they're gonna spend less, and we generally see that inflation rate starting to decline. So again, a negative relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. Next, what I wanna talk about is the NARU, the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment, okay? I know, that's a mouthful, but I, if you really break it down, if, you, like, if I put you in a room for five minutes to just kinda of think about that term, I think you might come up with the right definition. The non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. And what is it? It's the lowest the unemployment rate can get. So think of us moving this way in the model, okay? It's the lowest the unemployment rate can get without the inflation rate beginning to accelerate upwards. Now, to fully understand that, I'm going to go back in time pre nehru So cover up the nehru There's no nehru There's no red line right here, okay? So kind of get rid of that red line, get rid of the nehru All I want you to be looking at is this Phillips curve. So way back in time, people saw the Phillips curve as a policy choice, okay? Hey, we can have really low inflation rate, but we'd have to accept high unemployment. Or we can get low, 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 low unemployment. Yes, we just have to accept a higher inflation rate. But then economists in time, okay, especially around the 1970s said, no, 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 that's not right. When you try to have a really low unemployment rate, a really low unemployment rate, you're not just accepting a higher inflation rate. What's gonna happen if you keep that unemployment rate way over here, if you run that economy hot, is that inflation rate is gonna begin to accelerate upwards and that's what we're going to see and that's what the Nehru is okay the non-accelerating the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment the lowest the unemployment rate can get without the inflation rate beginning to accelerate upwards so in other words if we try to run hot guys get an unemployment rate below this thing called the Nehru the inflation rate begins to accelerate upwards now and you can also see on the graph it says NRU. That was the term that was used before the neighbor, the natural rate of unemployment. Natural rate of unemployment, we associate the natural rate of unemployment with kind of these types of natural unemployment known as frictional and structural, things that we're pretty much always going to have with us. The idea is, guys, you cannot get the unemployment rate to zero. Uh-uh. That's impossible. You can't get to zero. You're always going to have some unemployment. It's natural. It's not about the economy going into the doldrums. It's just natural. Again, structural and frictional. I'm not going to go into that right now, but there's just some types of unemployment you're always going to have with you that's the natural rate of unemployment then again as people started to look at this Phillips curve as a policy choice and we could be anywhere on it people said no, no no that's not actually understanding the Phillips curve correctly or really understanding economics correctly you can't just accept lower and lower and lower and lower and lower unemployment and just a higher inflation rate you're gonna make the inflation rate accelerate upwards, okay? And so the NARU is just the NRU, okay? They're just used interchangeably, but it just has this meaning that we want for this particular video. So I hope that makes sense. Final thing I want to say about both the NRU, natural rate of unemployment, and the NARU, non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment, is they both coincide with what we call full employment, okay? So when we are at the NRU or the NAIRU, when we're at these things, we are at what economists call full employment. And again, full employment does not mean 100% of people looking for a job uh, have found a job. That is not it. Full employment has some level of unemployment associated with it. Let me just give you some numbers here. Kind of current debate these days, the NARU, the natural rate of unemployment, somewhere about 4.0 to 4.5%, okay? Somewhere in that uh, territory. Okay, so here's the thing. Let's get to fiscal and monetary policy. 
So when we think of, <clears throat> sorry about that, when we think of macroeconomics, guys, there's two general policy tools, okay? These huge policy instruments that we have to try to stabilize a macro economy, okay? It means the economy as a whole. And what are they? Fiscal policy and monetary policy. What is fiscal policy? It's a manipulation of the government's budget to try to stabilize the economy. What we're really talking about is changing taxes and spending and entitlement payments or transfer payments, okay? Then monetary policy is really manipulating the interest rate. Generally, we think of them as manipulating the short-run interest rate or short-term interest rate in, helps of, in hopes of trying to also manipulate long-term rates, but just interest rates in general in the economy. So again, fiscal policy is the government, okay, the, is the government's budget, right? It's spending, it's taxes, it's entitlement programs, things like that. Monetary policy is changing the interest rate. And here's the deal. In the last two years, and you could argue longer than that, well, actually at least two and a half years, but you could argue actually longer than that, we've been running the economy kind of hot, guys. What we have been using is expansionary fiscal policy and expansionary monetary policy. And I want to explain why that is or why we can come to that conclusion. Well, on the fiscal policy side, when you do expansionary fiscal policy, when you're trying to run the economy hot, okay, when you're trying to kind of stimulate the economy, what we know or what we can look at to see how much we're up, you know, stimulation we're trying to do is the deficit, okay? That's the key thing. Look at the deficit. If the deficit goes up, guys, that's expansionary. That's stimulative policy. If that deficit comes down, oh, we are reducing the amount of stimulation, okay? And I would actually go as far as saying this. What you should look at is the deficit as a percent of GDP, okay? Now, look at the deficit as a percent of GDP and then look at the GDP growth rate. If the deficit divided by the GDP is greater, okay, than the GDP growth rate, you're doing stimulative policies, no doubt about it. And the bigger that gets, the bigger that difference gets, the more stimulative it is. Now here's the deal. In the last two and a half years, we have been doing stimulative policy. No matter what anybody would say, well actually, nobody's really gonna argue with that. People are gonna tell you, we've been doing stimulative policies. We've been running it hot, okay, which is pushing us to the left. On top of that, monetary policy, we've been having interest rates at zero, okay? A lot of economists like to talk about kind of like normalized interest rates. What would be the normal interest rate? It's associated with kind of like the real rate of growth of the economy, which a lot of economists would probably put around 2 to 2.5%, somewhere in there. It doesn't matter that much. I just want you to know it's usually associated with the, you know, with the natural rate of growth of the economy. And that would be 2 to 2.5%. Again, we've been keeping interest rates at zero. So if those interest rates are below, guys, the kind of that the, you know the growth rate of the economy, what we might call like interest rates that are normalized, then that is also stimulative. So we have been running things hot. So a lot of people said, here's what the fiscal and monetary policy have been doing. It's been pushing us over to the left. It's been pushing us up this curve, right to there. Okay, well, when you do that, great, you know, you drive that unemployment rate to 3.6%, which we're all pretty happy of, but hey, that inflation rate ticks up because where the Fed really wants it to be and where a lot of economists, kind of a consensus view of economists would like it to be, where it was two and a half years ago was 2%. That's known as the Fed's target. That's kind of where they want it to be. So we've seen it getting driven up here, right, in those last year and a half, two years, okay, to there. Now, I know we're even higher than that, but that's where these terms come into play. So here's the issue. When you are over here, workers start seeing prices going up, right? They see the prices of goods and services going up. They see what economists call their real income, how much their income can buy in terms of goods and services. By the way, their nominal income is just the dollar amount of their income. Their real income is really the purchasing power of their income, how, much their, how many goods and services their income can buy. So when those prices are going up, hey, they say, hey, my real income's going down, so they begin to agitate for higher wages. And yep, now we're getting onto that wage price spiral. So they begin to agitate for higher prices. If they are successful in agitating for those higher prices, we generally say as economists, hey, the expected inflation rate is starting to go up. And see, this line right there is drawn in respect to some expected inflation rate. And technically, for this line, it would have been 2%. And how do I know that? I just go to my Nehru, and where my Nehru intersects this line, that's my expected inflation rate, okay? So when we're over here at this dot right there, 
The actual inflation rate is now 4%, but if we're still on this curve, we're at an expected inflation rate of 2%. But if then all of a sudden those workers are agitating for higher wages, wage increases of 4%, hey, guess what? The expected inflation rate is changing. And so we redraw the line. There we go. Phillips curve, 4%. Now why 4%? I go to the Nehru, where it intersects my new line, there it is, okay? So, do we drift from here to here is the question. Do we drift from here to here? Well, the answer is, are we stimulating the economy with monetary and fiscal policy? Well, what did we do when this started to happen, when our unemployment rate dropped to 3.6 and we saw that inflation rate kind of go up to 4.0? Did we see the monetary authorities begin to raise interest rates, right? No, we didn't. We did not when we were back at this point. Did we see fiscal policy begin to pump on the brakes, maybe raise taxes or cut spending or cut maybe transfer payments? For the most part, no. I will say fiscal policy did cool a little bit, okay? But monetary policy stayed very stimulative. And so what happened is, instead of drifting back over to here, we got the inflation rate accelerating. Guys, again, you try to hold at 3.6, an unemployment rate below the natural rate of unemployment, the inflation rate begins to accelerate upward. Wage price spiral. So, Part of the mechanism, this is where the Phillips curve doesn't fully explain this little mechanism of wage price spirals perfectly, so I'm going to kind of jump off the Phillips curve for just a second. So wage price spirals is this, guys. When wages go up, that's the income of workers going up, so we generally think of them spending more, okay? Now, just by the way, you might say, well, doesn't that affect the profits of people, and doesn't that affect some people's income who are making profits from businesses? Yes, but technically speaking, when you're a macroeconomist, you say the marginal propensity to spend additional dollars of income is higher for laborers, people making a wage, than those who are entrepreneurs, those people who are owners of the capital out there who are making the profits, okay? So even though profits could be squeezed a little bit when those wages go up, in total, because wages are going up and the people who are on wage incomes who get their income mainly from wages have a higher marginal propensity to spend, it's known as marginal propensity to consume, the, you know, the fact that they have that means that we would actually see more spending in the economy. It makes a lot of sense, I think. On top of that, cost of production are going up because that's what a wage is. So we've got two things putting upward pressure on prices. What are the two things? We pay people more, now spending goes up. On top of that, cost of production is going up. So both of those are inflationary. Again, I want you to kind of associate that with that arrow right there. Now, I'm not just saying it's because of the wage increases that we go from here to here. It's also because, again, our fiscal policy and our monetary policy is expansionary. It is stimulative. So it pushes us up, right, to 6.0. Now, again, we stay there long enough, you start seeing those workers agitate for now wage increases of 6%, not 4%, 6%, right? And when you see people agitating for higher wage increases, wage increases of 6%, guess what? It's because they're now expecting a higher inflation rate, right? And if they're expecting a higher inflation rate, we have to shift that Phillips curve. So there we go, 6%. Now. Does fiscal and monetary policies pull back on their stimulation? If they do, we should drift over to that dot. But they did it. <laughs> they were behind the curve. Now, I will say, this is when we got up to 6%, you did start to see, okay, uh, uh, the beginning of talking about decelerating that stimulation. But push up, 8.6%, okay? up in that area. That's where we're at in June 2022, or at least that was what the data was at the end of May of 2022. Way up here. And again, people start to ask now for wage increases of 8.6. Phillips curve 8.6%. And that Phillips curve is adjust upwards. Now, I will say, we are not, you know, we're cutting back on the fiscal and monetary policy stimulus now. So maybe, you know, okay, we're gonna drift back to here. The first thing I want you to understand is that means, hey, look at those unemployment rates beginning to normalize, okay? 4.0 to 4.5, at least. But here's the bigger issue. This is where the story takes a kind of negative turn. 
Okay, so we finally come over to here. We break the wage price spiral, right? Okay, boom, We're hopefully we don't see 9.6. Now, I'm not sure, maybe we will. Because again, we really haven't got those interest rates quite up to that normal range just yet. But anyhow, maybe not. Maybe we're, you know, we're heading over here, things calm down. When you get to here, you're at the Nehru. You're at a non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. We don't expect to see the inflation rate accelerate up anymore. Good news. Bad news, you're up here at 8.6, meaning you've got an unemployment rate of somewhere between 4.0 and 4.5%, good, but your inflation rate is 8.6. How do you get from here back to where you want to be, which is right here? And that's the negative aspect. That's the process of disinflation. That's where we see the Fed starting to actually have to put us into a recession. They're going to have to push us off into a recession. And here's the thing, the higher the expected inflation rate is, the higher we're up this curve, the further to the right they're going to have to push us because you want to, they're going to have to push us all the way to about right there. Look at that. I know that's about as ugly as it can get. That is a very high unemployment rate. And then they keep us there for a while, what we experience becomes what we expect, and then hopefully that Phillips curve adjusts back down. People start to agitate for a 2% increase instead of the 8.6. Great, we broke inflation's back, and this curve comes back down, and we eventually get back to here. But that process of going out to here and then adjusting back to there could be a year, year and a half, two, two and a half years. We did it in 1982. It didn't take that long to get through this process, but it was a painful, painful 18 months about. Could be 18 months of pain coming our way now. Hope not. There is a chance that, hey, those supply side issues could lighten up and people's inflation expectations don't really adjust all the way up to 8.6. Maybe they only adjust up to like 5.5 or something like that. And so maybe it's not gonna be as tough a situation as we expect it might be, but this is what economists are worried about. And this is what they call a hard landing. So anyhow, we talked about, again, maybe a little bit too much in this video. We talked about wage price spirals. We talked about the Nehru. We talked about the Phillips curve model, fiscal policy, monetary policy, and running the economy hot. And hey guys, we probably shouldn't run that economy too hot. The Nehru might be the Goldilocks zone. That might be where we should be most of the time. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next video.